Good morning. Welcome to the Celtic Way Morning Briefing Live. It's Tuesday, February the 7th. I'm Tony Haggerty at the Haggerty 10 Twitter handle. And I'm joined today by Sean Martin at Sean Martin TCW. Good morning, Sean. How are we, Tony? I'm very well. Yourself? Aye, not bad, not bad. I was reacting very quickly to this news that Adeguchi's going, so... Yes, indeed. We'll come to that. And before we do anything, also encourage you to... Get your questions in, guys, the comment section. We'll do our best to answer them openly, honestly, and humorously if the, if the, the need arises, because we don't take ourselves that serious, Sean, do we? So here we go. But first and foremost, do the housekeeping, and I'll direct you to the ticker tape running along the bottom. Subscribe to the Celtic Way. Cost you £2 for two months. You can help us continue to produce top-quality Celtic content covering a club like no other. So join us www.celticway.co.uk forward slash subscribe that's www.celticway.co.uk forward slash subscribe and also big up to our sponsors Seneca Medical Group the Celtic Way Morning Briefing is now sponsored by Seneca Medical Group and Seneca are the number one hair transplant company in Europe and they offer innovative hair restoration treatments and you can find out more about Seneca via the links in the description of this video. We say thank you to them every day. Thank you, Seneca. Now, Sean, you just alluded to it there. Ida Gucci is going on loan. Now, I'm going to try and say this without making pig's ear of it, but he's joining J1 league side Avispa Fukuoka. I think I got that right, Sean. Might not have, but hey, there you go. I'm sure somebody will correct me in the comments. But yeah, he's on there on a loan deal, Sean. Good deal for the player and sort of saw it coming from a while off, eh? Aye, I mean, we've been talking about this since since the start of the season, a couple, maybe a few games in after he'd got another injury and then didn't really get into squads. And I mean, he played 150, I tweeted this out about half an hour ago, he, he played 150 competitive minutes last season, Tony. Um, only got one start and that was obviously the ill-fated Alwa Athletic game in the Cup where yeah. he got injured. Um this season, no competitive minutes, and he's been in just three match day squads. So, although maybe it's after the transfer window here where we thought it might happen, it's, it's able to be done elsewhere, especially since he's going back to Japan. So, I think it makes sense. I think, um, first and foremost, it's been confirmed as a season long loan. So, it'll be to the end of the year, end of the J1 League season. Um, and Avispa has reported the same, but neither mentioned an option to buy. Neither club sell to or Avispa. So, yeah. I don't know if it's there. I, by omission, it, it, the assumption is it's not, but nobody said it, is, it isn't. So um, that that's something to consider. Um, the Avispa announcement contained a wee message from Adeguchi as well, because the Celtic one was just a tweet saying he was away. Um, but Avispa says that uh, he's joining up with the team on Friday, but he sent them a message just now just saying, nice to meet you, and he'll do everything he can for the club and looking forward to working with them and stuff. So I don't know, Tony, is it basically a... Even if it is temporary, a good buy, good luck. Hope you find an enjoyable football home, basically. I would have thought so, eh? Go and resurrect your career back home and see if you can be the player that uh, you can be or the best player that you can be. And we spoke about it before. He's been, he's had horrendous luck, hasn't he? From Aye. that Alawa game onwards. And it came very apparent that he wasn't going to make any match day scores. And I think the form of the team as well didn't help him, did it, in various players. And even when there was maybe gaps in the midfield, the manager still didn't turn to him. And the manager said that he watches players in training the whole time. But he has has been really unlucky in terms of injuries. And uh, you you wish him all the best. You don't wish him what happened at Celtic, but you hope that he can go and uh, resurrect his career and do well back in his homeland. And who knows what might happen in the future. Yeah, um, I mean, Edward coming in, uh, here's in Sayonara de Gucci. I still refuse to call him just Gucci. Uh, that injury suffered at Alwa was a curse. Uh, in Edward's opinion, he became cautious and lacked aggression after that, but all the best for his future. So a, f- a fair few um, similar lines. Robert Gibson uh, saying he came, he saw he went home as the accidental tourist. Uh, and But then comes back in saying he did have a shock and run with injuries, though. So to be fair, good luck to him. There's plenty of sentiments like that. Um, yeah. So I don't. The thing is, I don't think anybody bears him any ill will. It's not no. like he played and was shocking and just never really managed to get the chance to play. Um, and when you look at the, I've already updated my squad depth chart, Tony, taking him out. <laughs> it. And if you're working on the, the kind of proviso that it's 
two for each position, then right now that takes one out of the number, whether you think it's going to be a six or an eight, it takes another one out of that. So you're talking streamlined in that mm-hmm. midfield that's getting there. You're yeah. talking Hatati and Turnbull, O'Reilly and Moy, and then McGregor, Iwata and McCarthy. And only one of them, McCarthy, is one that you could say is expendable. The rest are, are going to play their, their part. Yeah. I think it's a, a question of what if with Gucci, isn't it? Hmm. Either get seen, you, you just kind of you just wonder what kind of player he would have been had he not suffered those injuries. And he, he didn't get you didn't see him enough to make any kind of sound judgment. You know, there was a small to use Aiden's phrase sample size, wasn't it? And there wasn't yeah. enough football there to turn around and say he could have made a difference or not. And you feel for the player and you feel for his family, you just you know, and just it was just sad that that, that happened to him. and as I say, you do wish him all the best and take it for there. He's got this chance to go on loan and, and just get back to playing football again. And I think all footballers just want to play football, don't they? Regardless of who it's for. Most I Most do. Some get to a certain stage and I think well, they're quite happy. I'll say I'll think of Scott Bain. And now I don't think he's got any intention of playing football. <laughs> um, which can I, I can actually put a link up. Aidan did the, the newsletter last night. Just kind of looking at contract situations. Yes. Off the back of our discussion about Aaron Moy. And David Pundle yesterday, he, he kind of takes in Joe Hart in that. Uh, and then we mentioned for the likes of McCarthy, and then within Joe Hart, within the Joe Hart kind of section, talked about the potential successors. And, and basically, the, his opinion was that the successors probably not at the club already. Take from that what you will. Yeah, well, that's you just alluded to there about Scott Bain. Uh, are players content to sit on the bench? Does Scott Bain fall into that category? I wouldn't fall into that category. I don't imagine you would. You'd want to play, wouldn't you? I mm. just, I wouldn't be content to be a, a number two or an understudy to somebody. I'd, I'd want to play. So, if I was Scott Bain, I would be asking about, you know, going on loan or certainly playing football, getting minutes somewhere. Mm. But as you I say, mean, as... for most, for most, I would think mm. that would be, that would be accurate. Um, you do get certain. Certain, not I was going to say characters. That's maybe unfair. That sounds negative, but you get you get players that get to certain stages in their career where they yeah. maybe accept or they're looking to their next step of potentially becoming a coach. I'm thinking down at Man United, Tom Huddleston, who was still playing. Yeah, he, yeah. He, he's went to Man United to be a B team player, to be the under twenty threes over age player, and, and help the youngsters through. And I think he's permanent with coaching and stuff. So, you some some will get to that kind of stage, but for for all. Of, for the majority of players, Tony, I agree. I think the majority of them want to play football. And certainly Ed Gucci at 26, um, yeah. it's, it's about playing, especially when he spent basically a year not playing. I'll qualify that as well by saying goalkeeper's such a specialised position, isn't it? Mm. You're either playing yeah, or, goalkeeper, or, you're, or you're not. So you, you, I, I'll, I'll cut being some slack on that. But I'm just talking about you know, kind of own you know, personal and professional pride. You'd want to go, you'd want to go and play. I, I mm-hmm. just... I'm thinking about myself. I don't know what's going through. Scott Bain said maybe he is happy to sit there and wait for his chance, but it doesn't seem to be coming, does it? No, he, he I, I don't. I don't think he expects it to come either because he's clearly third choice. When Hart, I mean Hart's undisputed number one just now. Seagrass yeah. got the cup games when he was fit for the cup games earlier in the yeah. season, and Bain even when even when we were talking about if if Hart was to be rotated out or if it was cups and Seagrass was injured. When we, we all kind of agreed that, well, if Seagrass doesn't fit, then it's just going to be hard again. It's not going to be Ben. Yeah. Um, and I think that's the situation you're in. Toby will I am, he's away on loan to Cork City, so it'd be interesting to see when he comes back yep. if he's kind of made an impression. Connor Hazard's still here, but his contract expires in the summer. I think he got the chance. I think the stars aligned. I've said it before. The stars aligned that season. Um, for him to get his chance, I don't think they'll align again for him. Yeah. Correct. I don't think so either. I don't. I don't think Bain's chance is coming along anytime soon, and I would be seeking to either go on loan or even just even leave the club to go and get first. His contracts up. His contracts up the same summer as uh, Joe Hart's and Vasilis Barkas. They're <laughs> remember, the, remember him. <laughs> uh, they're all up in the same summer. And speaking of contracts, Andrew Galea makes a good point. Eddie Gucci's on a long contract. He is until twenty twenty six. So. I mean, you've still got another three and a bit years. Um, yeah. If there is no option to buy, if there is no kind of avenue to, to, to make it permanent. I would have thought that would be addressed at some point once he's played some football, eh? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Saka's laptop, best luck to you. Yeah, I mean, I don't think any... You said earlier, I don't think anybody 
uh, bears him any ill will. Just one of those players that you sign and just didn't get the chance to see uh, enough of, and injuries yeah. have these these progress, and it happens in football sometimes. But get your questions coming in, guys, or get your comments coming in. We'll do our endeavour to read as many as I'm out. Uh, now, Sean, here's one that did tickle me, and we can have a laugh with this. Uh, we're talking about we'll answer them humorously if we can, but I believe Alistair Johnston's been learning to speak <laughs> Scottish, hasn't he? He has. By, wa- by watching Still Game, episodes of Still Game. Now, keep it clean, Trips. Aye. If you're going to post in the comments. But what what phrases should he be learning, Sean, from, well, from watching Still Game? What I will say is, right, in the time, Max, and I read the small Alistair Johnston's watching reruns are still game to familiarise it he put up it was looks as if he was just starting it it was season one episode one um <laughs> blind ass about no he isn't he <laughs> <laughs> um what i will say is i thought he did okay at the scottish terms see the, he did, the, he did the very club, well actually the club, yeah the club done that burns night thing with greg taylor who by the way i was not happy with not knowing some of them uh mm. like it come on yeah surely, surely he must have known that but Surely, I, watches, I just, he surely watches this every day and he would know what Glick is. <laughs> and then, you know what I, mean? uh, I just hope when it comes to the still game, I hope Alistair Johnston doesn't start asking Big Ange for two pints anytime soon, Tony, because he'll be out the door, <laughs> he? he'll be away. That'll be it. Yes, it'd, be, it'd be all over, wouldn't it? Yeah, indeed. No, I, I, uh, I found that funny. Let's be honest. It's uh, quite humorous that he's uh, watching still game just to sort of. You know, get getting getting tune, but as you say, even if Greg Taylor doesn't know, then what chance have we got, Sean? <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I know. Did you know? Did you know them all? I, I mean, I knew them all. I thought yeah, it was quite. They were all. all right, of course, right, I they were all. They were. They were guessable. Maybe not for Alistair Johnson. Not for Alistair Johnson. No, but for, for Greg for Taylor, Greg, I thought. Yeah, I, I thought, thought he should have known them all. Yeah. Yeah. There was a couple. Um, <laughs> Alistair Johnson clearly thought they were dirty. He clearly yes. thought there was a couple of dirty meanings in it because he was kind of, oh, should I say that? Should I, should I say it? And stuff. Quite funny. But I love the fact that you kind of knew what bolt your rocket and all that kind of meant as well, that kind of stuff. Uh, Which you could have guessed, I suppose, but even still, big up to him because he did very well. Uh, so if there's any phrases when we keep them clean that you post up, we'll maybe try and read them out, Sean, eh, that I uh, also If there are any that are clean, of course, I'd be in the, the key part of it. And also get your questions coming in if you want us to talk about uh, anything Celtic related. Sean, we've got one Tony here that I'll put to you, which kind of flies in the face of being humorous, I suppose. But um, plenty of talk about Leeds United sacking their manager yesterday, and I suppose yes. the have been installed on the bookies list, like, I think third or fourth at ten to one. So we've got plenty of comments about that. Michael Ross saying Ange won't go to Leeds. But if Liverpool were to make an offer this summer, if Jurgen Klopp continues his downward spiral, I presume that means then, then he would be off as a, a boyhood Liverpool fan, as you well know. Um, I'm going to put Kaiser's comment up here. He says, in his opinion, Ange would only leave for a bigger club and he has the green glasses installed. So there's only a handful of clubs, Kaiser says, across the world that he would leave for. And in his opinion, Leeds United is not one of them. Tony, like, to come to you first, I presume you're going to have the same attitude towards this as I do um, Listen, what's your opinion yeah I'm just going to get linked with every job that comes up no. because of how well he's doing Ange will pick and choose his time to leave Celtic but at this moment in time he seems to be planning for the future I agree I don't think Leeds are that club I think it would take something like Liverpool to tempt him because he has a boyhood Liverpool fan as you said mm-hmm. there and so I think that's maybe one that you would keep your eyes on if Klopp were to leave and you know you but first and foremost it's all right uh, it's all right linking them with these jobs it has to be actual interest mm-hmm. and I think at this moment in time if a Leeds came to say we want permission to talk to your manager Celtic would tell them where to go and quite rightly and I also think Ange would tell them where to go I don't think he's finished in building what he started He's only halfway through building his beautiful home, beautiful house, uh-huh. Celtic of Ange European football. I mean, lots of pluses to keep Ange here. The the board seem to back him. He, he's mentioned that a few times. He's been in, backed incredibly, uh, been supported incredibly by uh, the board members, Michael Nicholson in particular. 
So you know you've got a, he's got a good thing going. He's got access to the Champions League group stages if he wants it, and he and he can steer his club to to the title. And he, and he, I think he's got faith in his own ability to do that. He's brought in some incredible players for the football club, playing a brand and style of football which you would associate with, well, the very, the very briefings that the Celtic way, if there's such a thing exists. But you know, and the buy-in as he keeps talking about from everybody, that's a that's a powerful thing in football. You know, it keeps managers happy, and you know you've you've seen it with players, you've seen it with managers. What's the one thing that England offer you that Scotland doesn't? It's money, isn't it? At the end of the day, it's money and possible ambition and to manage in a, a, a top a top league, if you're going to call it that way. But I've said before that I, I think we do Scottish football a disservice. We do it down a lot. I think the product's pure, it's raw, but there's an honesty about it. And I think I think that's what Angie's Angie's pure is on. There's an honesty mm-hmm. about and refreshing honesty, and I think he likes it for that reason. He's never ever spoken about money, has he? Nah, nah. He's not. No, he's never, never made any mention of money since he came to the club, and uh, and I think that's something that floats his boat in terms of Celtic. And he, I think he wants, he doesn't want to leave Celtic not having had a right crack at the Champions League and being a success in Europe. And mm-hmm. I think he'll stay for that, whether that's three years, four years, five years, time will tell. But. I just don't see him going to a Leeds, possibly Liverpool, but they have to want him. That's the thing, they have to. You know, if Liverpool come and say they want permission to speak to Ange, then I, w- I would get worried. But is that going to happen? I, I-, I don't know. I don't have a crystal ball. Uh, my hash coming in saying Ange has been talked about right now on Talksport, our uh, read the Leeds job. He's been talked about on here, read the Leeds job as well, but I presume it's two very different tones of conversations. <laughs> um, uh, there's plenty of comments here, Tony. Um, Derek Crawford saying he thinks Liverpool is a huge attraction for him. Yeah. And says, Tony, I just worry that Brendan Rodgers was planning ahead also, but then he jumped at the first opportunity. What I would say to that, and I presume you, you'll you agree, is different situations. Yeah. I think because Brendan Rodgers had managed in the, the English Premier League, I, Brendan always wanted to go back there. So I think he was always... I'm not saying he was going to jump on the first opportunity, but I, I always felt that, you know, you had Brendan for, you know, enjoying while we could. He was collecting his 200 and pass and go with Celtic in a kind of Monopoly style. That That's, a, that's how we always felt about Brendan. While he was here, they, they played some wonderful football and gave you some wonderful times. But I always thought, you know, enjoying while you can. I don't get that feeling with Ange at this moment in time. I really do think he's he's building something and he wants to build something and why else would he uproot people from various parts of the Asian football world to then leave them? Mm-hmm. You know, I, I just uh, I just don't see the correlation there. And I've said before and we've spoken about this so many times, doesn't matter what job comes up in England, Ange will be linked oh, because I- of the success he's had at Celtic. So get used to it. There's only one man who'll decide when he goes, and that's Ange himself, and I, what do I always say? Listen to him. <laughs> Listen to what he's saying. He will signpost it, and he will tell you when he wants to leave this wonderful football club whose fans are the best in the world, as he said, best on the planet. You know, I just don't think he wants to leave that at any stage soon because he's still building his beautiful home, and he's getting there. I think he sees that he's getting there, and I uh, they win the title, you, you know, they're, they're still on course for the table, but I don't want to get ahead of myself. But I think if he wins the title this year and they go back into the Champions League and, and they have a real crack at it and try and he wants to always improve, so that would mean winning games in the group stages, Sean, regardless of who you draw in the group. You know, I think that's his dated aim and I think he wants to make sure that if he does leave, that he leaves Celtic on a, a sound footing, that they are a team that qualifies for the Champions League on a repetitive basis, but I, <laughs> yeah. Paul Byrne says he thinks you'll get your heart broken, Tony. I think it's it's just one one inevitability in football. It is that that will happen at some stage to you, whether it's yeah. a man or a player or but, whatever. You, I mean, you and Kevin don't stop going on about Charlie Nicholas leaving. 
<laughs> and that was in 77, do you know what I mean? I'm oh, sorry, Ken Douglas, Ken Douglas leaving in 77, sorry, I meant that. that that's um, when, after Charlie and I, because I stopped falling in love with players like Anxies and managers. So, I, uh, I yeah, I, you know, Hugh Lloyd calling the commotions, are you ready to be heartbroken? <laughs> Uh, mm -hmm. Derek Crawford saying, well, well said, Tony, no point worrying until there's concrete offers. I mean, for me, the way that I, I kind of view it is, I think you just you just look at it similar to a player. Yeah. Because he's doing so well, people will be taking notice. It's just natural that that's what's going to happen until it becomes an actual approach and therefore an, therefore an actual decision. It's just noise and bookies odds. That's all it is. Correct. Um, but for whatever my top is, is worth in this, I, I just think he's got something far too good here to leave at this juncture for a relegation battle, whether it's Premier League or not. And of course, no disrespect to Leeds, they are a historic club and there is a there is an argument that they should be a lot higher in, than what they are just now. But it's almost a thankless task at that moment anyway. I mean, you compare it, leaving the money at the door, when you compare everything else, there is no there is no comparison between Celtic and Leeds. And um, you, you, you referenced that thing that he said way back at the start when he joined Celtic about building a beautiful house. And more than once I've said, realistically, because he's at Celtic, that house could become a skyline mm -hmm. if they're invested mm -hmm. in him the way that they seem to be. Yeah. And I, I, I don't see any reason it doesn't. I'm going to put this one up for you, Tony. Brown Warrior, how can a manager be planning for the future if the plan is to continuously sell your key assets for profit? He says this to me and you, and I've got three words, Tony. Player trading model. Yeah. It's he's the reality in which he works. But he's not kidding anybody on, is he? That's what I'm saying. Listen to him. That's what he's telling you. But do you not trust this manager to go and find key assets mm -hmm. using his knowledge of world football markets? I do. I think Celtic are in a right good position just now. They've yeah. recruited a manager that knows the game inside out, playing a brand of football that everybody loves, and he's brought in players the, who... You, who after the 10 was shattered, you, you could only have dreamt of coming. You just, uh, you you know, that we've gone up such a tangent, Celtic, and Celtic need to uh, be applauded for this by getting Ange. You know, because a, a lot of people, myself included, and I've said this on record, I was invested in Eddie Howe coming, I thought that was really exciting. Mm. And then when Ange came in, I was, wow, you know, bit of a, a come down. But I tell you what, I... I <clears throat> Who else out there would you want to be the manager of your club at this moment in time? I'm not so sure you could just pick somebody off the top of your head and say, I'd want them. You know, the, the direction that, <clears throat> excuse me, Ange Postacoglu steered the club in and the players that he's brought is, uh, you know, it's sensational. <laughs> Steve McGrory likes a, <laughs> a, a reference. Music, a Steve, reference. Yeah. Listen to what the man said as Wings saying, saying that Steve, Indeed, my dad was a big Wings fan, so I grew up many a morning hearing that in the background. Correct, and I, I keep saying it, and I constantly say to you, Sean, listen to what the man says, you know. So I, I just don't see him leaving at this juncture. And yeah, player trading model, that's mm -hmm. the way Celtic will continue to thrive, operate like a big club, and be successful. And I have no qualms about that at all. Speaking of wings, none of the band are on their own at the moment anyway, because it's, it's <laughs> like, as, as much as I, I get what Brown Warrior's point was like, in terms of like a genuine question, how do you plan when you need to lose your assets? That's part of the plan and that's part of the reality in which it works. That's part of the, the whole player trading model. They need to find value for these assets. Yeah. And he said that at the AGM himself, don't get too attached because people are going to go. Um, but this winter window, Yakimak is still technically isn't away. Juranovic, all right, yeah, a, a key player, but it was already replaced before he came in the door. So, realistically, if you're going to know no how we always say, like, you can't call somebody world class just willy nilly, you can't call somebody a legend yeah. willy nilly. So, if you're going to call someone a key asset, you can't do that willy nilly either. So, I think they kept all their key assets in this winter. So, although I get Brown Warriors' point, I don't think they've actually sold any of their key assets yet. No, not at all. And uh, yeah, um, I. <coughs> Listen, I I agree with you, Sean, that we have managed to keep the key assets. I think the manager was determined to keep mm -hmm. the key assets because he's not finished yet. <laughs> it's like mm -hmm. He's still planning ahead. He's still, he's still got ambitions for Celtic, ambitions that match every Celtic supporter's ambitions. 
and ambitions which seem to be matching the boards as well because they're backing them to the hilt. And long may that continue. Until somebody comes and asks the question, then, I, I, you know, I, again, you said it there, it's bookies odds and it's speculation, it's paper talk, it's call it what you like, but he will be linked with every job until he leaves the building and then somebody says, told you. Well, I mean, I, I, that's, that's, there's nothing yeah. sure of, Tony. I nothing sure yeah, of. So um, I... One last one on Ange, right? One last one. Uh, Beach Boy saying, Tony, you build a good story, but it's pretty naive in my opinion, um, or in Beach Boy's opinion. Top managers want to compete against the best, so going against Park Buses and the Stevie Hamels and Liam, mm. Fo Liam Foxes of this world isn't that testing. I'll go back to the the second sentence there. Top managers want to compete against the best. Where is the best managers? Where where are they to be found? Champions where League. already is the Champions League. Correct. So uh, you know, might I already be. I mean, don't get me wrong. Fair enough, Beach Boys. Six games a season might eventually. He might go right. Well, that's not enough. I want to do it more often. But fundamentally, he's only just got a chance at the Champions League for the first time. He's he's still getting used to. It. He's still testing himself. He's still testing his system, his players, his his philosophy. Um, and there is. There very much literally is not a higher quality testing ground for it than the Champions League, even if it isn't. I, I mean, Beach Boy saying six games against 44, even if it is just six games just now, obviously the aim for him, he'll not be thinking it's just going to be six games next year. He'll be thinking six, eight, ten. Eh, sorry, six, I, six, eight, ten. Nearly get, nearly get lost in my counting there. So, unless he goes to a Liverpool top four, mm -hmm. England. He's not going to get Champions League. Well, Champions League, is he? Mm. So he knows that he's got a good thing going up here and he can get regular access to the Champions League by Celtic, with Celtic by winning the title. <coughs> yeah. Mm. And I get Beach Boys has got a point as well about domestic stuff, but yeah, the Champions League is what Andy's at Celtic for in the first place. I, I've always thought that too. He said it himself. So, I, I mean, uh, again, going back to what Steve McGrory said, listen to what the man said, you know? So, and as you've just said there, it's all still new to Ian's playing at that level. Connell O'Brien, I agree with you, Sean and Tony. Glad somebody does, Connell. <laughs> uh, one, lie, one last one, but very more. Compare the results in Europe the last decade to this decade, the player trading model suits the balance sheet, not the team sheet. Fact, I would argue that the player trading model was there in the last decade as well, though, when Neil Lennon was the manager. Was it yeah. not having John Park with the Wanyamas, the Van Dykes, all them? I mean, that, that is the player trading model. That, that, that was the same model. I get where you're coming from in terms of primarily as a balance sheet thing before the team sheet, you would argue. But then I could also make the argument that it's how it's been spent when it comes in. And the last three windows, maybe the last four if you count the summer one, even though the first summer window was an overhaul. It was like get as many bodies in as possible. But the last three windows certainly... They'll be spending more intelligently. They'll be buying into what it is that the manager is, is trying to do. And they're obviously trying to set up the infrastructure behind them, as far as I can see, where it's a coherent style, a coherent kind of attitude in the market. And I've always said it's going to be... It's all right basing it on Ange Postecoglou's philosophy, but it needs to exist whether he leaves or not, or when he leaves. It's still, yeah. it, can't, it can't just revert to something else. It's got to continue in a kind of coherent style. So that that's a big worry for me. That's a big thing for me. But I do think that um, I do think that you could argue that that, that was that was a case in the last decade as well, Tony. Yeah, I'm laughing at Derek Crawford. Can we move on? I'm starting to worry. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to worry about, Derek. Keep calm. Go right. Be fine. Managers not going to Leeds. I will, I will say that here and now on this morning briefing. Ange Postecoglou will not go to Leeds. There you go. Now it's up to Ange to, to make a mug of me, isn't it, Sean? Well, aye. Uh, Wouldn't be the first time, Tony. Correct, Amundo. Exactly. So, yeah. Uh, Carol, um, can we talk about Varnan? <laughs> no, 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 we can't. No, we can't. We've managed to go a few days without talking about Varnan. Correct. Indeed. Anything else, Sean, coming up on the comments that we've not uh, no, right. we've, we've went right down a, a rabbit hole with, with Ange. With I Ange. think only that's what most of the comments are about. Um, but, yep. Fair enough. Fair enough. Well, 
Celtic play St Myrna in the Scottish Cup on Saturday and that seems ages away, doesn't it, Sean? Ah, yeah, it does. Because there's no midweek games just now, it just seems as if it, it seems as if the weeks take longer and I don't know. It's uh, on the one hand it's it's kinda of refreshing to have a change of pace, but on the other hand we've we've got to think of something to talk about on this every day. So get your get your topics in for uh, for the next few days if you have any ideas or then you want us to talk about in particular, but Yes, that was uh, that's a sensible suggestion as well, Sean, indeed. <laughs> but yes, I don't think Andrew will be going anywhere, but he, he will, again, he'll be get linked with everything. He'll be getting spoken about in talk sport and whatever radio station you want it to be. Yeah. And wasn't, wasn't Jesse Marsh linked with the Celtic job a while ago as well, Sean? He was, aye. He was, aye. He was in the running. He was, well, he was, I say he was in the running. He was talked about with it, aye. But... Yes, indeed, indeed. Well, that's half an hour, Sean. That's... Seems a decent place to wrap up for today because we want to keep topics for Wednesday, Thursday and Friday, don't we? Yep, 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 yep. So thank you for that, guys. Hope we've not depressed you too much with Anne's leaving chat, but we're in the camp that he's not going to leave, so I'm sure you should all be uh, confident about that, or hopefully confident about that. But I'll direct you once again to the ticker tape running along the bottom. <clears throat> Excuse me. You can join us. On the Celtic way, cost you two pounds for two months. Click of a button, www.celticway.co.uk forward slash subscribe. That's www.celticway.co.uk forward slash subscribe. Two pounds for two months. Can't say fairer than that, Sean. Exactly. Bye. And on that note, on the I said I said about about Aidens, um, <coughs> about Aidens article. It's up on the website today. But we've also got, as I promised yesterday, Stuart Ross has um, broke down. Kyogo's performance from Sunday, uh, which oh. a few a, we threw up a few comments yesterday about his movement and different things. Well, Kyogo's movement and more and more, not just the movement, but primarily his movement uh, against St Johnston. Stewart's broke it down in, in minute detail, and it's some reading, Tony. To be honest, and the conclusion <laughs> the conclusion that comes to I think most people would agree with and probably have known for a while now that any SPFL comparison has been well and truly blown out the water if anyone even sought to make it. For a while to begin with, sure. Uh, Stuart's always a good read, good guy as well. So, uh, I would encourage you to have a read at that. It's uh, makes for good reading. And also, just before we go, just say thank you to Seneca. Seneca, the Celtic Way Morning Briefing is now sponsored by Seneca Medical Group. And Seneca, the number one hair transplant company in Europe, and they offer innovative hair restoration treatments. And you can find out more about Seneca via the links in the description of this video. So, thank you guys. Thanks for your comments. Thanks for keeping the chat going. Ange, Ange will stay, Sean, won't he? <laughs> I think so. Right. Of Ange must stay. Ange will stay. I'm nailing my colours to the mast on that one. Okie dokie. We shall see you all tomorrow. Have a terrific Tuesday. Back for a wonderful Wednesday, hopefully. See you soon. Cheers, guys. Cheers, guys. Cheers, Tony. <laughs>